Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Wesley United Methodist Church. We are so glad you're here to worship with us on this Sunday morning. And we would like to spread some Christian love. So could you please turn to a neighbor, somebody else in your pew, or somebody across the sanctuary and let them know you are glad they are here. Wesley Church this morning. Um, we just want to remind you that the connection card in your bulletin helps you. It's a little white piece of paper that helps you connect with the church. Um, if you want to share your gifts in any way, or if you have a prayer request, that's a great place to do that. It's also how we keep attendance. So if you would be willing to write your information as much for as little as you want uh, and put that in the offering plate as it goes by later this morning, that would be wonderful. And in a couple of Sundays, we're going to be celebrating Consecration Sunday. And in order to do that this year, we're going to put together a video of ways that Wesley Church has impacted your life. So um, you'll see Lauren Malott out with a camera, and she is going to be interviewing people. So if you would like to share your story about how the church has impacted you, find Lauren sometime today and uh, let her videotape you talking about how the church has impacted you, and then we're Gonna, she's going to put that together for us and show that on Consecration Sunday. Yeah, so that'll be right outside of Kid Zone, um, which is this blue space uh, right down the hall, and she'll be there right after this service, and you can answer today's question. Also today, we have Charge Conference, and we have invited you. We can take up to 11 10 you're, people, you're driver, and I'm driving, and we're going to leave at 3.30 to make it to Paris in time. So if you're interested in that, um, you're welcome to come. That's before 3.30, because we'll leave at 3.30. And uh, please note in your bulletin that in a few weeks, we're going to be having our annual Thanks for Caring Cookie Drive. So if you are a baker and would like to bake some cookies, um, you can do that. Or if you are a driver and would like to deliver cookies, um, you can do that that as well but please see your bulletin under the heading of cookie drive for more information on dates for those but right now we'd like to invite up uh, Reverend Janice and she has an update about helping hands this Saturday we're going to be having helping hands and we've been announcing it we have 12 requests and 13 people now guys come on you can wash windows ladies you can step you can uh, change a battery think about <clears throat> being a person who can who a fragile person uh, who can't get up on stools anymore even to change batteries or filters are who have just a limb that needs to be lopped off and they can't they cannot do it and there's no family there to do it for them we have never ever had to tell anybody we couldn't do their work and we have always done that work by noon so we could go have pancakes with the pancake people <laughs> and I just if I could if I wasn't old and my knees wouldn't give up and you wouldn't want to see him have to lift me up off of my knees I would get on my knees and say think about this Saturday could you give us a half a day to help some people uh, let them know that we care about them enough to help them trim we've got some bushes to trim some windows to wash some gutters to clean out we need some tall ladders we need uh, something that has a, a pick 
pick up the, and take the things around. If you can, uh, sign up or you can write it on the connection card if you're embarrassed to do that. I would like, if you are going to come with us <clears throat> and you're not going to eat um, pancakes, if you don't like pancakes, I can't imagine anybody that doesn't, <clears throat> but if you would, would not want to go to the pancake meal, would you just put no pancakes? Because we buy the tickets ahead of time so that we be sure that we can get in and they'll have plenty of tickets for us. So I hope you will just think during the today and uh, or even during the week that, you know, if, if it looks like you could come and give an hour or 30 minutes or however, we really could use you. We're going to meet in order to leave at hopefully at 8 o'clock to be at the home so we can finish by 11 or 11.30 and go eat pancakes. Um, if, if you're going to come, <clears throat> you need to bring good gloves to wear. Uh, if it's rain, you know, not ladies' gloves, but work gloves. We had one person, I won't, whose name will not be told, that had to go to the emergency room because they thought they could urgent, urgent care, not. <laughs> Ask him about that. He's the only one in nine times we've gone that have ever been hurt. Our youth pastor. Okay. Um, where if you've got a no, yeah, no names at all. If you if you have a, a, a some kind of a Wesley shirt, uh, wear it. Wear clothes that that are suitable for outdoors. If it rains, we will postpone it a week, and I'll be back bugging again. If it if if it rains, the pancake will still be around. So you will need to come and uh, get, I'll send something out, you find a time when you can come at 8 o'clock and get your tickets and go have pancakes. Okay? I hope you will consider this because it's not a hard job and it really is one that tells the people who can't come to our church and can't do some things that we love them. Thanks. Yes, I was going to remind you to bring your gloves, but Janice is taking care of that for me. <laughs> All right, let us prepare our hearts for worship as we listen to the prelude.
Let us stand in body or spirit together as we worship God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. In the name of God, we welcome all who come, trusting or faithless, faithful or rebellious. We come because we know our lives are incomplete. Perhaps if we listen, there will be good news for us. Seek the God of righteousness and justice, who comes unfailing as the dawn every morning. We wait for God to be revealed, daring to open our eyes to God's correction. God, who greets us in the morning, sustains us through the day and through the night. We seek to call on the name of God to answer our God. Let us join together in the prayer. We cry aloud to you, O God, as we approach your holy hill in awe and reverence. Who can escape your judgment or stand before your righteous anger? Change our thoughts and our speech and transform our actions. Melt our pretenses and false pride, that we might worship with genuine humility and openness to your correction in the service of Christ Jesus. Amen.
Thank you, Bell Choir. That was beautiful. Now we will be having a responsive reading from Psalm 65. <clears throat> is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. To you who hear prayer, all flesh shall come because of their sins. Blessed are those whom you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. You shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house. By dread deeds you answer us with deliverance, O God of our salvation. Who is the hope of all the ends of the earth and the farthest seas, who by your strength establish mountains, being burdened with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at earth's farthest bounds are afraid at your signs. and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. He provides rain, for so you have prepared You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty, the tracks of your chariot the pastures of the wilderness drip, and the hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks, the valleys deck themselves with grain, and shout and sing together for joy. the children might join Miss Jessia for Children's Church.
Let us stand together in uh, body or in spirit as we hear the gospel from Luke's account, the 18th chapter. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You may be seated. So last week, I, I had a little trouble with my Disciples Path homework. Week three, day five to be exact. Uh, in case you need to know, while I am the leader of the two groups who are studying a disciple's path, one on Sundays and one on Wednesdays, uh, I'm also completing the daily assignments just like everyone else in the group. So on uh, week three, day five, we group members were invited to consider the questions John Wesley designed for his small groups at Oxford that became known as the Holy Club. Questions such as, number one, am I consciously or unconsciously creating the impression that I am better than I am? In other words, am I a hypocrite? Number two, am I honest in all my acts and words, or do I exaggerate? Number five, yes, I'm skipping some. Am I slave to dress, friends, work, or habits? Number seven, did the Bible live in me today? Number 11, do I pray about the money I spend? Number 13, do I disobey God in anything? Number 16, am I jealous, impure, critical, irritable, touchy, or distrustful? How are you guys doing, by the way? Anybody doing all right? Okay. Number 20, is there anyone whom I fear, dislike, disown, criticize, hold resentment toward, or disregard? If that that's not all. If so, what am I doing about it? Number 21, do I grumble and complain constantly? You get the picture by now. There are 22 questions, by the way. And by the time I was finished answering, all I wanted to say was, doesn't the fact that I'm spending 30 minutes a day on this study count for anything? I'm doing some things right. I really am. I'm getting it. So Jesus says, uh, two guys went into a temple. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. Now, if you've been in church much of your life at all, you're likely to have heard Jesus criticize the Pharisees plenty, uh, and chances are you've heard a few sermons about how bad the Pharisees were. Self-righteous, legalistic, and hyper-judgmental. 
So you are likely to be suspicious about that Pharisee right off. But the Pharisee, you need to know, and I need to know, is dedicated to good things. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and tithing. In fact, he fasts more often than is required of him. He's commanded to tithe on some things, but this Pharisee tithes on everything. He's a good person who does good things and makes life better for other people because he does them. To use Wesleyan language, the Pharisee does his practices. He practices the means of grace. He practices his spiritual disciplines. He does the things faithful people are supposed to do. If he were a member of Wesley Church, or any other church for that matter, he would be the people who sing in the choir, and visit the sick, and prepare funeral meals, and teach Sunday school, and bring food for the hungry, and comfort the suffering, and fix broken door handles, and attend prayer group, and keep our ministry going by putting plenty of money in the offering. Plant. Or to put a bit of a, a twist on something the late great preacher Fred Craddock once said, the Pharisees are the people who sit in your pews on Sunday morning, week after week, preacher, and pay you to preach sermons criticizing and condemning the Pharisees. <laughs> So uh, two guys went into a temple. One was a Pharisee. And he was good. He was good. Don't forget that. He was good. The other was a tax collector. He was bad. Tax collectors worked for the Roman government and they could charge people as much as they wanted to on top of the required tax. And that's what they did. And they got rich that way, overtaxing the common people. And the common people hated them for it. The whole system was corrupt. Two guys went into a church. One went home right with God, something a person ought to want to be on the way home from church, right with God. Or as Jesus put it, one of them went down to his home justified rather than the other. Freed from guilt and presented as righteous. That's what justified means. Anybody who doesn't want to go home from church justified ought to wonder what they're doing there in the first place. So, the winner is, drum roll please, can somebody give me a drum roll? Come, that is a really weak drum roll. It's getting a little, it sounds like rain. We don't need rain. Drum roll, the winner is the tax collector. Yeah, the greedy, cheating, immoral tax collector wins. He goes home from church justified. But wait, that's not fair, right? Aren't we supposed to reward the good? Isn't that how it goes? The good, hard-working, ambitious, well-behaved, faithful, helpful Pharisee should go home justified. He should get the award. He should get his picture in the paper. He should get the recognition, not that tax collector. That's true. It's absolutely true. Good isn't bad, and bad isn't good. Right isn't wrong, and wrong isn't right. The Pharisee is not a, a horrible, no good, faithless, moral failure, if only you'll look down deep enough to see that. No, he's not. Nor is the tax collector a jolly good fellow, filled with goodwill and a loving heart after all. He's not. 
So going home justified, hitting the parking lot right with God must be about something other than being a good person. It must be about something on the inside. So there you have the Pharisee standing by himself, as Luke says, as Jesus says, and praying, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people. Thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. Now, you know there are times uh, when people will get up from their pew and mosey on over to the door at the end of the worship service and stand in line, look at me, shake my hand and say, Pastor, you were preaching right at me today. How would you do that? And Luke tells us today, Luke tells us exactly who Jesus' little story is for. He says, he also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. In other words, folks who stand by themselves and pray thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. Amen. So, thank the Lord we don't pray like that, right? We don't, do we? I don't. I don't say those kinds of things when I pray. So, this one's not for us. So, so thank you, God, that I, I'm not like people who uh, thank you that they aren't like other people. <laughs> thank you, God, that I am not like this Pharisee. Whew, what a relief. Thank you, God, that I've had the good sense to uh, confess my sin and be saved. Unlike this other person over here who can't seem to get through their head that they need to be saved. Thank you that I'm not like that. And maybe I don't say it to God. Maybe, maybe you don't say it to God, but uh, I, I'm, I, don't, I don't think that's the point. Who am I glad not to be like? Who are you glad that you're not like? Just fill in the blank. Go ahead. In your head. You don't have to say it out loud. I'm sure glad I'm not like... Who is it? Because I know me, I do, and I do, and I do, and I do this. I'm a really good do-gooder. And I sure don't think like that, and I, I sure don't act like this, and I sure don't approve of that other thing. Goodness, thank the Lord. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. The Greek says literally, me the sinner. God, be merciful to me, the sinner. As if just maybe he's saying, I'm the one. I'm the one, that guy, that Pharisee over there is talking about. Have mercy on me, the sinner. Me. Have mercy. I don't know what happened from there. The, the story uh, just ends. And some folks like to say, well, that man was changed after that. But I don't know that. I don't know. I don't know if he was or, or not. Jesus doesn't say. My, my best guess, disagree if you want to, but my best guess is that guy went right back to what he was doing before, tax collecting. All I know is this. All I know is he went home 
justified. Jesus says so. He hit the road right with God. Jesus says so. And anybody who doesn't want to go home from church justified ought to wonder what they're doing in church in the first place. Let us pray. God, we came to church today. We've come and uh, we want to tell you that we've done okay. We want to tell you how we've done really well. We want to tell you what we know about the ones who haven't. At least we're not like them. At least we're not like that. At least we don't do that or this. But all we really can say today, God, is have mercy on us, the sinners, sinners who know they're sinners, and sinners who don't know they're sinners, sinners all of us. Have mercy on us. In the name of the one who is your mercy, Jesus Christ, and who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this moment, I, yeah, here she comes. Miss Jessica comes with a crew. At the very end of this little parade of kids, I think will be Jessica Ulrich, our Director of Lay Ministries and Children's Ministries. And she is here with a ministry moment in the form of a, an appreciation. And there she is. <laughs> Just like we planned. Well, today, I don't know how much Pastor Sean shared with you, but today we just want to um, celebrate. We want to celebrate God's good work um, in the lives of the kids. Uh, the Holy Spirit's been really active, and it's been really an honor and a really cool um, gift, a really... Thank, I've been so thankful for the gift to be able to witness the Holy Spirit at work. And I'm not the only one who has been a part of this good work. And um, other people have been blessed to be a part of it. And they've taught and led and prayed for kids um, of this church and kids outside of this church. And so today, we just want to say thank you. And we want um, to say thank you to those who have shared their gifts in 2018 and 2019 in Children's Church and Sunday School here at Wesley. And so, if you have shared your gifts in 2018, 2019, could you actually come forward? I know, in front of people. Um, yeah, come, don't be shy. Come forward. Uh, we have a gift to share with you, but also... Um, 
we would also just love to pray over you as you continue to teach, as you continue to lead, um, and share your gifts with this church and with specifically our kids. Um, they've gotten to know and to love them in, in beautiful ways. Uh, first of all, I want to give you a little something to say thank you. I just want to say it's an honor to work with Jessica and these children uh, because they give back so much more than we receive and I've been doing this for some time in, in prior churches growing up but anyway it is the little children that lead and they teach us because they have such a zest for life and love and so honest. So I'm just encouraging anyone once a month if they want to come to, uh, to join us on their journey. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome too, but it's not expected in any way. All right, would you as a congregation uh, reach your hands out as we pray for our leaders and teachers of the children at Wesley? Let us pray. Gracious God, today we give you all of our thanks and all of our praise for your movement among us. We thank you for all who share their gifts and time to serve you to further the kingdom and to further the gospel. Would you continue to bless them and give them wisdom and strengthen them this day, we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as a people who are helping God, uh, through God's grace, to change children's lives. Did you hear that? To change children's lives and to change the world, let us offer our gifts to God with glad hearts.
please join with me in the prayer of dedication. For your mercy, when we least deserve it. For your understanding, when we our best intentions. For your strength, when there is nothing left within us, within us. we give thanks, loving God. Our Bless and multiply our tithes and offerings. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join uh, together in the affirmation of faith. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the Firstborn of all creation, the Firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen.
Now may God, our Creator, bless you and keep you. May Christ have mercy upon you. And may the Holy Spirit empower and enable you to have mercy on others who do not deserve it. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.